Trevor, we have 17 voting members present and the quorum. Uh, Trevor Howard, City of Newark, is here. Okay, Trevor, you would be non-voting. Yes. Okay. Okay, well, thank you. Um, we're going to do the approval of minutes. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions to the minutes of the March 9th board meeting? Hearing none, um, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? Mayor Kelly Ocean, I'll make the motion. Second, uh, Union County. Did you get that, Beverly? Yes, I did. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, thank you. The minutes are approved. I'd like to take this opportunity to present my report. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, it's just been two, two months ago on March 9th that we came together in the NJTPA board meeting in downtown Newark. Little did we know that our world was about to change completely. COVID-19 has brought tragedy to families across our region and shaken our economy, threatening the lives and livelihoods of many, many of our friends and neighbors. Sadly, the pandemic has taken a heavy toll. I'd like to take a moment to remember Councilman Michael Yun. Uh, who was ably represented um, in Jersey City on this board as the mayor's alternative for several years. He passed away last month, unfortunately, uh, due to complications from COVID-19. Um, I'm sorry for Jersey City. I'm sorry for Michael's family. Um, and God bless. Uh, to slow the spread of the virus, many of us are finding new ways to work remotely, doing our best to prevent the spread of this awful contagion. And many of us, of course, have been able to call to do so much more. We must take a moment to acknowledge and pay tribute to those on the front lines, particularly nurses, doctors, EMS workers, and others in the healthcare system battling the disease and those who are saving lives every day. But there are also countless others, grocery store clerks, stockers, factory and warehouse workers, police and firefighters, and yes, those in the in transportation industry, truck drivers, delivery men and women, transit workers, road maintenance crews, dock workers, and so many more. It should be noted that many of the essential workers stepping out of the safety of their homes every day are public servants. Working in the agencies that sit on this board, including the NJDOT, NJ Transit, and the Port Authority. Others are employed by county and local governments. They all deserve our thanks for helping us get through these troubled times. The NJTPA, for its part, has successfully continued its operations with staff working remotely. This is in keeping with the directors of the governor of our host agents and our host agency, NJIT. Mary will tell you more about that shortly. Uh, the key point is that while we're not on the front lines, the NJTPA has a role in keeping transportation systems functioning. This includes seeing that our region remains eligible for the receipt of federal funding by maintaining the TIP, preparing a long range plan, and monitoring regional air quality among the many of the mandates. We're also helping our subregions address trans transportation needs that will become even more important as the region opens up and travel over our roads and rails plays a major role in supporting our economic recovery. And this board may have a role to play in approving transportation funding under future federal stimulus bills. Over the long term, we must consider how our plans and programs can help our region bounce back and adapt to the new realities of public health. 
As part of this long range approach, I encourage all board members to participate in our virtual retreat scheduled for June 5. And you did hear that. We were going to have a retreat in Morris County, uh, but on June 5, we will do it remotely. This conversation will help lay the foundation for our 2050 plan as we look to build a better, safer, and healthier transportation future. Save the date and stay tuned for more details. But please note that if the region is in the midst of a return to work situation, we may need to reschedule this retreat. I look forward to working with you to navigate these uncharted waters. Above all, I hope you and your family stay safe. We'll all get through this together. That concludes my report. So now I'll take a break with our normal meeting protocol and ask if any board members would like to offer comments on our current situation. Uh, Beverly, do you want to do it by roll call by just asking each person so we don't have everyone responding at the same time? Certainly. Certainly. Hudson, Hunter, 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 Morris. She's got Middlesex. Chief. Is Middlesex here now? Okay. Noor? Um, I guess there's somebody there. Ocean? No further comment. Mosaic? Somerset? Sussex, Union, Bass, Warren, Governor. Governor's Office, NJDOT. I just like to wish everybody well and thank NJTPA for um, assembling this in a virtual environment. Thank you. NJ Transit. Uh, good morning, everybody. Yeah, just uh, echo echo Mike's uh, Mike's sentiment, uh, and also, of course, uh, thank the TPA for continuing uh, working with us. We have uh, obviously we're continuing to do our core work. We're continuing to push out projects. Uh, we're looking at a variety of potential responses um, in the coming months to the change conditions. That we're, you know, that we're all grappling with right now, um, and certainly our partnership going forward is going to be that much more important. So my thanks to uh, to everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you, Port Authority. Just to echo that we value the partnership with uh, our fellow members. Thank you, and citizens representative. Okay, Madam Chair, that's everybody. Thank you. Uh, why don't we start now with um, Mary, uh, our Executive Director of uh, report. Thank you, Chair DiFilippo, and good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today, and I, too, hope that you and your families are all doing well. As Chair DiFilippo mentioned, we are all dealing with the challenges of continuing our work under a stay-at-home order. In addition to shifting our board and committee meetings uh, to an online format, we are also moving our public engagement online, which I'll talk more about shortly. Following guidance from the governor's office and from our host agency, NJIT, the NJTPA staff members have all been working remotely for more than seven weeks now. During this time, we have maintained close contact with NJIT and with our sub-regional, state, and federal partners, as well as amongst our central staff colleagues. The pandemic may have temporarily slowed us down at the outset, but we are fortunate that we are able to get our work done remotely. 
This means that our projects and our programs can advance and we can deliver our work program with as few disruptions as possible. So while we await word on reopening, the important work of the NJTPA continues to move forward. It's too early to know what this pandemic will ultimately mean for transportation planning in general, but it is certainly not too soon to be thinking about our region's transportation future. As you know, we are in the process of updating our long range transportation plan. We have always considered how game changing disruptors may affect the future, but I don't think any of us envisioned the scenario that we are all living in today. We discussed these uncertainties during last month's ORTAC meeting, which you'll hear more about during the committee reports. We also hosted a virtual meeting with our up next young adult advisory committee on this topic. And it's difficult to know, for example, whether social distancing will have a long-term impact on travel behavior, whether more travelers will opt for private versus public transportation, or how land use patterns and densities may change. And while we don't yet know the implications, as a metropolitan planning organization, we can and we will study these early trends, analyze the data and the maps, and think about how all this could affect the future of mobility. Continuing on this topic of long range planning, we recently engaged the consulting firm of McCormick Taylor with support from Mercer Planning Associates to oversee public outreach for our long range transportation plan update. They will assist us with the virtual board retreat that Chair DiFilippo mentioned just a few minutes ago. I expect that you will be receiving an email later this week, which will include a short pre retreat survey. When you see that, please take a moment to respond since the results will help to inform and guide the discussion that will take place during the virtual retreat, virtual retreat in June. Although we had always intended to conduct some portion of our plan outreach virtually, the pandemic has of course made it necessary for us to delay any in-person events at this time. However, it is early enough in this process that we believe we'll be able to visit every subregion over the course of our plan outreach. And as our schedule takes shape, we will keep you informed and work with you to promote public engagement efforts in each of your subregions. As many of you know, we're already working with several subregions to assist in the, transfer, uh, the transition to virtual public engagement, engagement for studies that are currently underway. We also participated in a panel discussion on virtual public involvement at last week's quarterly state transportation innovation council meeting. And we have also put together a report on virtual public engagement best practices, which is available on our website. We are using this guidance to develop our online outreach capabilities, and we encourage you all to do the same. And we're always available to assist if you have any questions or concerns about this, about this work. And before I conclude, I did want to share, to share some important information about the Metropolitan Area Planning Forum, which is also known as the MAP Forum. As you may be aware, the MAP Forum is a consortium made up of the NJTPA plus nine other MPOs and councils of government from the four states of New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania, uh, which have entered into a memorandum of understanding uh, under which uh, we coordinate some of our planning work. This MOU originally dates back to 2008, and since its inception has enabled the MAP Forum members to work collaboratively on such issues as data exchange, information sharing on regional projects, and other transportation efforts common to these MPOs. Today, I'm pleased to note that the NJTPA is developing a cloud-based GIS platform using existing technology resources that will better allow MAP Forum members to work more efficiently together. We have begun by addressing the ongoing issue of truck parking availability, which has proven to be a particular challenge during the early days of this pandemic. Using ESRI's ARC GIS Hub as a two-way engagement platform to connect with the MAP Forum member agencies, we are obtaining critically needed 
truck parking information and providing access to it through this interactive platform. We have already begun testing and demoing this site, and we're expected to have it going live very soon. I want to again thank all of you for participating today. These are difficult and challenging times, and I really appreciate your taking the time to join us today. Uh, please refer to the central staff highlights uh, that were emailed to you this morning uh, to learn more about the work that we have been doing. And that concludes my remarks, uh, Chair DiFilippo. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mary. Uh, now I'm going to call on Freeholder John Bartlett, uh, Chair of the Project Prioritization Committee, uh, to give the committee report. John, good morning. Thank you very much, Chair uh, DiFilippo. And uh, greetings, everyone from Queen. I'm echoing on someone's computer, or is that my own? Ah, much better. If you're, so, if you're I am pleased to report on the activities of the Project Prioritization Committee. At the April joint meeting, we, which was held online via GoToMeeting, the committee recommended approval of four action items, all of which are on today's agenda. The first concerns a minor amendment to the FY 2020 through 2023 Transportation Improvement Program, or TIP, to add the downtown Toms River Loop Road project in Ocean County. That's this project has received a federal build grant of $5.66 million and must be added to the TIP. The project will first undergo a concept development study led by Ocean County to produce a preliminary preferred alternative. This is listed as action item number one on today's agenda. Next, the committee considered a minor amendment to the current TIP to add the Laurel Avenue NJ Transit North Jersey Coastline Bridge project in Monmouth County. This project will be ready for concept development this spring and needs to be amended into the TIP. NJDOT has agreed to make $800,000 in fiscal year 2020 surface transportation block grant program flex funds available for this purpose. This is listed as action item number two. Action item number three is a minor amendment to add funding to a project already in the TIP, the Rumson Road over the Shrewsbury River project in Monmouth County. Revised cost estimates show that an additional $10.9 million in surface transportation block grant program funding is needed in fiscal year 2020, and an additional $20.1 million will be needed in 2021. The funds are available in the NJTPA future project line item. The fourth and final action item in our, on our agenda today is a minor amendment to add the Riverbank Park bike trail project as requested by the Town of Kearney. This project has completed the design phase and needs to be added to the TIP to begin construction. Through a funding agreement with the state, the NJTPA has made $1.82 million in fiscal year 2020 funds available for the project. Finally, tomorrow the committee will be holding a special teleconference meeting at 2.30 p.m to approve needed funds for a rockfall mitigation project in Hunterdon County. Details and call-in instructions have been provided to committee members. That concludes the Project Prioritization Committee report. Um, and thank you, F. Freeholder Bartlett. Um, before we go into the um, four action items, in the interest of simplifying um, our board actions for this online meeting. We have asked several board members to be prepared to offer motions in seconds. So for action item one, I understand that Ocean County would like to move this item. Ocean County will move uh, number one. Thank you. And Monmouth County, would you like to second it? Yes, Monmouth County second. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any comments from the board members? Any comments from the members of the public on this item? All right, hearing none, then I'll ask that, um, uh, Beverly, would you please do the court roll? Bergen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And would, um, who, who is this from Bergen, please? That's Pete. 
Hi, Pete. Okay. How you doing? Essex? David Antonio, yes. Hudson? Byron Nicholas, yes. Hunterden? Battle, yes. Jersey City? Marco Patel, yes. Middlesex? Monmouth? Monmouth? Morris? Uh, yes, Kathy DeFilippo, yes. Ocean? Trailer John P. Kelly Sr., yes. Messiah? John Bartlett, yes. Somerset? Sarasota, yes. Sussex? Josh Hertzberg, yes. Okay, I won't need uh, your names going uh, for completion here. I was just trying to ascertain if anyone else had joined the meeting. Union? Yes. Warren? Yes. Governor's office? Yes. NJDOT? Yes. NJ Transit? Yes. Port Authority? Yes. Citizens Representative? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, the second action item is the minor amendment uh, transportation improvement program to add the Laurel Avenue, New Jersey Transit, North Jersey Coastline Bridge Project in Monmouth County. Um, Monmouth County, would you like to make a motion? Yes, Monmouth County would like to make a motion. And NJT will second. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the board members? Any comments from members of the public on this item? Hearing none, uh, Beverly, would you please call the roll? Bergen? Yes. Essex? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hunterden? Yes. Jersey City? Yes. Middlesex? Monmouth? Yes. Yeah. Morris? Yes. Ocean? Yes. Passaic? Yes. Somerset? Yes. Sussex? Yes. Union? Uh, yes. Warren? Yes. Governor's office? Yes. NJDOT? Yes. NJ Transit? Yes. Port Authority? Yes. Citizens Representatives? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you. A third uh, action item is a minor amendment to the fiscal year 2020. Uh, the Transportation Improvement Fund to add federal funds to the Rumson Road over the Shrewsbury River uh, project. And um, Monmouth County, would you like to move this motion to approve yes, the Yes, Monmouth will make the motion. Motion County will second. Thank you. Beverly, will you please do the roll call? Bergen? Yes. Essex? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hunterden? Yes. Jersey City? Yes. 
Monmouth? Yes. Yeah. Morris? Yes. Ocean? Yes. Passaic? Yes. Somerset? Yes. Sussex? Yes. Union? Yes. Warren? Yes. Governor's office? Yes. NJDOT? Yes. NJ Transit? Yes. Port Authority? Yes. Citizens Representative? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you, Beverly. And our last uh, action item for the Project Prioritization Committee is a minor amendment to the year 2020-23 Transportation Improvement Program to add the Riverbank Park, Riverbank Park bike trail project as requested by the Town of Karen at Kearney. Um, may I have a motion to uh, move this item? Yes, Hudson County would like to make a motion. Thank you. Seconds. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the board members? Hearing none, are there any comments from the uh, public on this item? Okay, hearing none, Beverly, if you could call the roll. Bergen? Yes. Essex? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hunterdon? Yes. Jersey City? Yes. Monmouth? Yes. Morris? Yes. Ocean? Yes. Passaic? Yes. Somerset? Yes. Sussex? Yes. Union? Yes. Warren? Yes. Governor's office? Yes. NJDOT? Yes. NJ Transit? Yes. Port Authority? Yes. And citizens representative. Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you, Beverly, and thank you to the board members. Um, next, we're going to call on Freeholder John Kelly, Chair of the Planning and Economic Development Committee, to give the committee report. Good morning, John. Thank, good morning to you, and thank you, Madam Chair. On behalf of the Planning and Economic Development Committee, I am pleased to report that at the April joint meeting, Ocean County's own Mark Jenke, Chairman of the Regional Transportation Advisory Committee, informed members about the April RTAC meeting, which included a wide-ranging discussion about the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on long-range planning. When the pandemic hit, work was already well underway on the NJTPA's next long-range plan, which will serve as a vision for the region's transportation future. Many of the game changers that were considered as part of the last long-range plan, such as climate change, autonomous vehicles, and the rise of online commerce are still relevant today. But the pandemic has shifted our planning perspective. During the RTEC discussion, some thought-provoking questions were raised. Will the increase in telework continue? How will shifts in commuting affect public transportation and downtowns? Will there be reduced demand for office space? Is it possible to maintain some of the positive environmental as impacts, such as cleaner air, after the pandemic ends? What implications are there for transportation equity and connecting workers with jobs? The next long-range plan must consider these and many other issues. In overseeing development of the plan, the Planning and Economic Committee will play a central role in helping shape NJTPA's responses to the new challenges 
arising from the crisis. I look forward to working with committee members and the entire board in this vital work. Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you for that, Charlie. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, John. Jack. <laughs> I'm looking, I had my finger for the next one. Um, That's good. Um, for the freight initiative, um, I'm going to call on uh, Freeholder Charles Kenny, chair of the freight initiative committee, to give the committee report. Good morning, uh, Charles. Kathy, um, this is our Dave. We have some late breaking news on this. Um, yeah. Dave, yeah, sure. Hi, this is Dave Barron. Um, it appears that Freeholder Kenny was not able to get on the call this morning. So um, I think in the interest of uh, time and everything, we should uh, just move on and, and we can, um, you know, uh, you, you can see in the staff highlights or, you know, uh, other places what occurred at the last Freight Initiatives Committee meeting. I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm sure that he's sorry that he was unable to join us. So I think, but I think in the interest of keeping uh, the, the meeting going, we should probably just uh, move on. Thanks. Okay, thank you. So that brings us to the portion of the public uh, participation. Uh, we're gonna turn on uh, this, that section of the meeting. Please report to comment, uh, please request to comment or ask questions in the chat box or wait until we call for comments from the, those of you who are on the phone. Also, please mute yourselves when you are not speaking. So if any members of the um, public, uh, do we have anything in the chat box? Uh, Madam Chair, this is Ted. No, there's nothing in the chat box um, <clears throat> at this time. We do have two people that have uh, signed up in advance to make general public comments. Okay, so let's start there then. Okay, the first person that signed up is uh, David Case, Chair of the Essex County uh, Sierra, or the Hudson County Sierra Club. The floor is yours if you'd like it, Sierra Club. Uh, he is on the call. It looks like he's muted. Uh, David, can you unmute yourself if you're there? Ted, maybe we'll go to the next one and come back. Roger that. Uh, the second person that has signed up uh, for general public comments is Tim Severner. Tim, are you on the call? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? This is Tim Sevener. We can hear you, Tim. You certainly can, Tim, thank you. Oh, okay. This is Tim Sevener from the Transit Village of Mount Tabor. Um, this is regarding the proposed New Jersey Turnpike Authority Toll Hiking Capital Construction Plan. In the midst of the COVID-19 virus, which is already taking 90% of cars off the road, as people work from home or stay in social isolation, it is folly to continue planning for 11 billion in major road expansions, essentially a disaster for fossil fuel emissions. We do not yet know the long-term impacts of the social isolation shutdown on future transportation needs. Will people continue to work from home? Will there be a movement back from high-rise New York City to less densely populated, walkable transit-oriented main streets by New Jersey Transit's many train stations? Support for more distributed development has been a key part of the Regional Plan Authority's fourth regional plan just updated in 2019. The pandemic's aftermath may accelerate the desire for main streets. Actually, uh, to that effect, there was uh, just a New York Times article about uh, some people moving back out to um, New Jersey to towns accessible to transit. Uh, it's ironic that the COVID-19 shutdown and subsequent huge reduction in driving emissions has led to a consequent huge reduction in nitrous oxide and other pollution, which are the really dangerous public health, but further contributes to asthma and respiratory issues, which makes COVID-19 more dangerous. Besides the major threat to climate change posed by the 43% of New Jersey emissions from driving, do we really want to go back to normal pollution levels from driving once this pandemic is over? Unfortunately, the capital construction plans of the Turnpike Authority to be funded by the proposed rate hike will follow the path of the last $7 billion road widening stint 
and lead to more driving, more pollution, and ironically just lead to more congestion. Uh, Transportation for America did like a 14-year study which showed that while freeway capacity grew 42% and population grew 32%, it actually led to more congestion, 144%. Uh, furthermore, it really makes no sense for, to spend $11 billion on uh, New Jersey Turnpike Exits 14 to go to Jersey City in an urban area. How is that going to help uh, congestion whatsoever? Or, or access. Once you get to Jersey City, you're still going to be stuck in traffic and congestion and dumped into crowded city streets. Well, we already have the the, uh, the Hudsonburg and Light Rail, Hoboken access, path access um, to get to provide public transit means to get to these to to Jersey City. Um, we, we should follow the example of, of Virginia. Virginia Rail has made a, a classic public-private partnership with CSX. They are actually expanding uh, their their transit because it only cost five billion for them to improve the rail, freight rail included, which is part of your rubric two. We've got to get freight off the rails as off off the roads as much as possible and get it onto rail which is way more energy efficient, can be electric, et cetera, um, instead of spending $11 billion on widening highways. That's, that's what we should be doing. We, we, uh, the, the Coalition of Environmental Groups, New Jersey Association of Rail Passengers, Lackawanna Coalition, a number of groups, they, 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 we support the um, parts of the, the plan, you know, for road, road bridge repair for, you know, road maintenance. But uh, but we oppose any road widening. That That is not going to solve congestion. It's not going to solve the problem. Uh, that money should be spent instead on approving New Jersey Transit, for example, on, on the line that, that me and Kathy DiFilippo usually take. We've had a cut of 22 weekday hu- Hoboken train since 2006, uh, you know, before the pandemic um, service uh, cuts. Um, as the most densely populated in the state, in the nation, more densely populated than China, New Jersey should be serious about using our rails, unused rails rights away to truly reduce congestion, promote walkable main streets, and improve public health by reducing auto pollution. Ken, thanks very much for your comments today. We appreciate it. Uh, we'd like to go back yeah, to the I first, also... uh... We'd like to go back and give the first person that signed up, David Case, an opportunity if he's logged back in to uh, to make any public comments. Yes, Case, hello. Are you with um, us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? I I had to dial in. Sure. That's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I apologize. My computer uh, crashed and uh, my, my prepared statement uh, crashed with it, unfortunately. So I'll be extemporizing a little bit. So bear with me. Um, I chair the Hudson County Sierra Club group. And I, I had wanted to speak on the subject of New Jersey Transit and the proposed uh, New Jersey Transit grid power plant at Kearney Point. Um, I live right here in Jersey City Heights, about a mile and a half away from that plant would be. I was actually, or I, yeah, I was a constituent of Councilman Yun. Um, and thank you for your uh, your remembering Councilman Yun. We, he was a, his loss was a great one for our community here. Um, it's it kind of exemplifies what this community is going through right now and has, has gone through for many years um, and the issue of environmental justice and the pollution that we have from so many sources here. Uh, the incinerator, incinerator, the Essex incinerator, all the highways that come through here. We have the coal-fired, the coal-fired plant for decades. Um, you know, this is an ozone failing zone. 
as I, I see noted in the transportation planning uh, report, right, when I was doing some research, and I, I noticed that the uh, transportation planning authority, one of their goals, stated goals, is clean air. And I just, I can't possibly see how stationing a new fossil fuel uh, power plant right in the middle of Hudson County, in the middle of a flood zone, no less, uh, can be consistent with the goal of, of creating clean air here for Hudson County and really Essex County to anywhere in North Jersey. Um, I would, I, and I noticed that the Transportation uh, Planning Authority has quite an engineering staff, and I would encourage the Transportation Planning Authority to maybe shift some of the resources if possible to doing the research on sustainable energy, a sustainable energy solar and specifically a solar powered transit grid with battery backup and possibly utilizing tidal power. Um, and I just think it's uh, a travesty that New Jersey Transit is claiming that they don't have the time to examine these. I, I, I think it's a, a real lack of due diligence on the part of New Jersey Transit, and I think the planning authority should, I would like to see the planning authority step in and make up um, that deficit of, of planning and diligence that New Jersey Transit is failing to perform here. There's a better way to do this than, than using 1980 technology. We need to move our uh, transit grid and our transit system into the future. Uh, rather than going backwards. And, and I'll stop there. I apologize for sort of extemporizing there, but uh, that's the gist of what I wanted to say. Thank you, Mr. Case. We appreciate your insights. Um, Madam Chair, there are no further um, members of the public that signed up in advance to speak, and I'm seeing no comments uh, in the chat box at this time. Okay, well, thank you. And thank you to everyone for your comments this morning. Um, next meeting, and I have, um, could I just make one comment? I'm sorry. I'm, yes, please. Uh, speak your name. Hi, this is Barca from Jersey City. Uh, Ted, would you mind just sharing my email address with the last constituent who spoke? I'd like to uh, just follow up and understand the concerns a little bit better. Yeah, Roger that, Bark. Uh, I'll send your uh, email information to Mr. Case right after the meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. I'd, I'd like Thanks. to follow on to that, the comments from the last speaker as well, just um, make a general comment relating to his comment. Uh, this is Jared Rodriguez, Citizens Rep. Um, I guess, especially given the fact that the levelized cost of power uh, for solar and battery storage um, is now below uh, natural gas, um, which I believe is the proposed uh, power facility by NJ Transit, um, especially considering those those changes and innovations that have happened over the past three-ish years, uh, I, I would say that it is probably time to rethink those plans. Um, and yes, I mean, if uh, if the if Barca from Jersey City is interested in having conversations about that further, I would be happy to um, discuss that as well. Thank you, Jared. Um, I absolutely am. And if if the member of the public is still on the line, um, I admittedly am not as familiar with this work or this project. So I'd love to just follow up and understand the details and work with the citizens representative and um, any of the other board members or RTAC members uh, to get a better understanding. So Ted will share my email address and we can discuss offline. Hi, yes, uh, thank this you is, very much. I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Byron Nicholas, Hudson County. Um, I too would like to uh, get more information. Uh, I would like to just learn more about the impacts that it may have on uh, Hudson County and the surrounding counties. <laughs> so, Ted, if you could just um, connect all three of us with um, uh, with the constituent, we will take it from there. Will do, Barker, right after the meeting. Thank you so much. No problem. I'm sorry, Chairwoman, back to you. 
Thank you, Hudson County, for um, reaching, um, responding to uh, the gentleman and uh, to um, take the initiative to meet and discuss the project more. Um, and thank you to everyone else who has made comment. Uh, I apologize um, at this last minute. There's somebody doing work on the outside of my uh, wall here, and you're hearing some buzzing. Uh, so the next meeting of the NJTPA board will be held J July 13th at 10.30 in the morning. If social distancing restrictions are lifted by then, then the meeting will be at our office in Newark. If not, details for another virtual meeting will be forthcoming. Um, with that, may I have a motion to, a motion to adjourn to pull out our jewels here? So moved. Who was that? Freeholder Kelly. Thank you. And a second? Second from second. Freeholder Colorado. Thank you. Um, thank you all for um, coming to our virtual meeting and um, I think it went pretty well. Uh, the staff has been remarkable at trying to get me comfortable with this. And um, I appreciate everybody's participation today. With that, I hope that you all remain well and that we can all see each other in the near future. Um, thank you for today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.